Fam, the vibes are a little crazy because we're about to spend the next 24 hours reviewing the foods of these haunted Connecticut restaurants. Now, I'm over here in Middletown, Connecticut at Harry's Jailhouse. Now, what's said about this location is there was a young girl by the name of Sarah who back in the 1800s is left haunting this very location. We're gonna go on the inside, see if we can talk to any of the owners, get a little more information about this haunted location of Harry's Jailhouse. Let's go inside. In March 2021, Carrie Carella and Heather Kelly opened Harry's in the historic former Pamicha Jail building, which dates back to the 1850s. The building was featured on an episode of Ghost Hunters more than a decade ago, Kelly said. Kelly said she was told the building is haunted by a young girl from the 1800s named Sarah, who's between 8 and 10 years old. She hasn't personally seen the apparition, but she's noticed flickering lights, drafts, and other weird occurrences. Anytime things start dropping, if we don't know what's happening or it just feels like a weird vibe, we put a mocktail out for her so she feels included, she said. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're over here with the owners of Harry's Jailhouse. I mean, can you let us know more of what you heard about Harry's Jailhouse? Uh, from what we've heard, Sarah has been here since the 1800s. Um, and there's little whisperings of her every now and then. Things dropping, drafts, uh, unexplainable noises. Lights flickering. Lights flickering. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and ever since she's been a little bit of public knowledge, she also gets visitors that come here and bring her gifts. Oh, wow. As of recently. And then for our part, we leave out uh, a mocktail for her whenever we feel her presence so she doesn't feel left out. Now, being that this is a restaurant, I know I definitely have to get this mocktail that you do leave for Sarah. But, I mean, is there any food in particular that I should get with the mocktail? Ooh, I feel like the dip set would be a good option. Get a good variety, just a bunch of dips, your refreshing mocktail. Yes. Good to go. Good to go? Yep. All right, that's what we're going to make happen, ladies. I greatly appreciate you both. All right, this is Carrie right here. Bam! This is Heather right here. And we are reviewing Connecticut's Haunted Restaurants. All right, fam, I need you guys to let me know if anything is flickering behind me. We're starting off water to wash down these pita sandwiches and we got a little lobster roll coming for you boo Sarah I got you pita bread nice and light we're gonna see what this queso cheese is actually hitting on the family and we can't stop at just the queso dip get that pimento in there too a little spoon get on there get on there pimento yeah I'm trying to hit that bite right there and understand family you just can't stop you just can't stop there you got to get that French onion as well so let's go ahead and grab up some of that, bong bong. And just all we're doing is just topping this thing off with flavors. If this is the dip set, get that thing wet, you know? But then what about that pico de manja business? All right, once again, leveling up. French dip. Mm. Oh, and those onions are powerful. Pimento cheese, queso, and getting that spicy creaminess under that onion. And working around with the garlic. Over the pita bread. Now that's a combination flavor for your dip set face. Mm. Alright fam. You see these old not steak, not really steak fries size, right? So just regular golden fries. And then with a little bit of ketchup and see what they're hitting on. Mm-hmm. Okay. I gotta ask you, family. When it comes to french fries, do you like them to be like double fried and crispy? So like blanched and then probably put in the oven and then fried up after that for crisp with sauce and pepper over them? Or do you, because these are actually a little bit on the softer side, right? So these are the softer fries that still have the salt all over them. So great flavor, but just softer. So do you like the softer fries or do you like the crispy joints? Hit me in the comment section below. <laughs> Let's get into this lobster roll though. This don't look like no regular butter for the lobster roll. Is that spicy butter? It has like that red tint to it, family. Somewhere Ain't that that yellow tint? That's that red tint. They trying to set it off? Queen Latifah style? So here we have the lobster roll. Here we go, house. Boogity boogity boo, baby. <laughs> I'm curious. Okay, crunchy bread action. Toast it up. I'm gonna hit it solo dolo before I dip it 
into what I don't know. I don't, I'm not too sure what's happening right there. Mm. Hmm. I had a lot of lobster rolls in my time. Maine got it going on. Connecticut, Connecticut, we have work to do in the lobster roll game. Because when I go to Maine, them lobster joints be dumb plump. And they just be in there. It's just like they just put the whole lobster in there as is. No shell. So just rip a lobster meat out, pop it up in there. This is more on the, the chopped and and it's like that's what Connecticut is known for, which I don't understand I don't understand, baby. We got so much potential that sometimes we end up missing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dip it up off in here. I'm doing this for you, Sarah. Ooh, that's wet. Hmm. I always keep it a bean. <laughs> the lobster roll, I'm not in love with. It can get a two and a half because it reminds me too much of other lobster rolls that I've had here in Connecticut. I'm still looking and hunting and searching for that perfect raw lobster roll. I haven't come across it yet. Even from lobster food trucks. Whoa. But what I will say, hmm. That dip set, the pita bread, French onion, pimento cheese, and queso, that little combination I made, crazy family, crazy. Sometimes they say you have a hit and a miss. We do have a hit and a miss today. Um, we found out a little bit about Sarah from the 1800s. I don't think anything started flickering, nothing started moving. I, I didn't upset her in any kind of way. If she's around, Sarah, what up, what up? I don't know if she's sitting next to me chilling, you know. But we have to continue on with the haunted restaurants of Connecticut. All right, fam, so we're wrapping things up over here at Harry's Jailhouse. Nothing too crazy, nothing too spooky happened with the apparition named Sarah. Haven't seen anything unless you guys saw something I didn't see. I don't know how crazy this series is going to get, but we're about to head over to our next haunted restaurant here in Connecticut. All right, family, your boys out here, Plainville, Connecticut. About to go over to J. Timothy's Tavern. This is one of those haunted Connecticut restaurants dating back to the 1700s. Even the original owner's wife is said to haunt this tavern. Quite possibly. We might run into a little something. I just hope I run into some good food. Let's slide. Most diners know J. Timothy's as the destination for dirt wings. Their signature chicken wings served fried sauce, then fried a second time. But some believe its building, which dates back to 1789, may be haunted. Manager Reno Ule, who's worked at the restaurant for more than 30 years, said he's had a few spooky experiences over that time period. Things like unexplained noises, or doors, or windows shutting. Some of that activity has disappeared since those doors and windows have been upgraded recently, he said. One thing he can't explain easily is the orbs he and the staff will often see late at night in the forge, the restaurant's downstairs dining room. They'll often see orbs in a pitch dark spot where there isn't any other interior or exterior light, he said. Some believe the spirit of the original owner, John Cook's wife, is still around the building. Ule says he hasn't personally seen the apparition, but he's heard stories. Late at night, when he's getting ready to close the restaurant, he'll say, tongue in cheek, Hey, Mrs. Cook, I'm just doing my walkthrough. Leave me alone. So what is the story about J. Timothy's back in the 1700s? So, I mean, obviously, I was not around in the 1700s, uh, not at all. Um, but as I've, 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 I've said the same thing. I've been here, like I said, I've been here 32 years. I can tell you that in my earlier days here, a lot more sounds um, and things that would happen that you just can't explain. Mm. And I've always, when I've been asked by other people, and I've, I've had other people talk to us about this, uh, you know, I tell them very simply, I don't believe in it, me personally. But I don't disbelieve in it when I can't explain it. Okay. Okay. I've not walked around and, and felt somebody, you know, pass through my body or something like that. Right. Uh, I've not had conversations with people in a room that weren't there or anything like that. Um, 
I witnessed a young, uh, uh, it was a 15 year old uh, young lady some 20 years ago. Um, a, a lady had written a book about it because that person had ended up telling other people she was having a conversation in my lobby on a Friday night with nobody and she was insistent the person was there the entire time to the point where someone called me over and said, are you the manager? And I said, yes. And he said, something's wrong with this person. And I was went looking, we went looking for the mother who was just right around the corner talking to some people at the table and this young lady was having a conversation with nobody in the middle of my lobby. Uh, again. Like, what, what, what time was that like? On a, it was a Saturday night, like at 6 o'clock at night. We were busy. I mean, I was on a wait list. We, my place was full, and she's standing in the middle of this middle lobby just talking to the nobody. All right, fam, we have the honey gold dirt wings. We already broke them down. We're talking about some double fried up action. Get them nice and crisp. And then, of course, garlic bread with the gargonzola and the fondue. Let's check it out. Talk to me. Everything's been some dip action lately, huh? Hmm. You gotta get crazy with it. Get 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 all that up in there. Make a mess with it, family. Make a mess. Okay. Now that's garlic. Now that's garlic bread in the next level. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know. When it comes to gargonzola, kind of reminded me of like blue cheese crumble, most definitely. You now the bread itself, toasted on the top, but extremely soft on the base. Making it easy for that nice light crisp on the fold, that bold fold from the potency of that cheese right there coming up. But then you have the creaminess coming in from the fondue, right? Great flavors, great garlic flavors. Again, another well connected situation here. This garlic bread is definitely getting a five all day in the plate. Mm. The only haunting happening here will be these flavors still residing in my soul. Mm -hmm. What are these honey golds hitting on? Oh, you see all that sauce. This is a sauced up situation. These wings right here, fresh, never frozen. And you can tell just by looking at it, it just look different, family. Whoa, let's get into it. Oh my God. Sweet and smoky. But next level activity, let me tell you something. These wings here, that honey gold, <clears throat> there's a sweetness that you have to appreciate. Meat is extra thick and rather tender on the meat. Nice, great bite. You're getting a wild sweetness to it. Nice little glaze over that thing. You're getting the zest and the tang, so you're getting that zang. That honey mustard is just talking to you as you take that bite. I didn't even have to hit it in the ranch nor in the blue cheese because the flavors alone are everything next level. Plenty of meat on that thing. Guaranteed to be that nice little filling that you need at the end of the day. You gotta keep it moving, baby. That's all good. Hey, dude, you're a big boy. How did you fit through here? No, no, a lot of bending. Hey, Hey, how you Yeah, what up, cuz? What's going on with you, family? How's it going, dude? Man, yeah. respect, yo. I like your shit, dude. Appreciate you, love. Damn, love dude. Right there. Yo, yo, you're the man, bro. Appreciate you, friend. Shit, bro. You yeah. eat some wings? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I had to bro. do a review today, oh, you know what I'm saying? Dude, dirt wings are the best. Oh, yeah. Man. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. Give me a, what's the name? Brandon, bro. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you, man. Have a good one, fam. All right, y'all. So just finished up. Jay Timothy over here. Food is good, no doubt. Story was even better. We still have two more spots to hit. It's starting to rain out here a little bit. But uh, be sure to check it out for yourselves, y'all in Plainville, man. Jay Timothy's, I holla. All right, guys, changing up the scene just a little bit because our next location is the 1754 house. Again, the name speaks for itself. Built back in the 1700s, right? Has to be some history here. Has to be some stories here. This one's gonna be interesting because when I took a look at it online, I was like, ooh, this one might be a creepy tale. I'm looking forward to it. So we're heading out to Woodbury, Connecticut for our next eating at the Haunted Restaurants of Connecticut. I hope you're enjoying this series. The building, commonly known as Connecticut's oldest inn, was previously the Curtis House, featured on a 2014 episode of Hotel Hell with Gordon Ramsay. Employees shared stories of plates flying off restaurant tables 
and bedspreads appearing rumpled just minutes after rooms were clean. A spirit named Betty haunted room 16. The front desk clerk told Ramsey, raising havoc with guests who stay there. Now, I'm covering the haunted restaurants of Connecticut. Oh, all right. You guys came up on that list. So, who around here would know the story? Probably my manager would know best. All right. Yeah. Or, if anything, my coworker who has been here since it was like Curtis House way back in the day. Would okay. Have great I, then that, that's what I need. Yeah. Now, man, I remember reading about it being the Curtis House. So, yeah. that, that's what I need to yeah, chop it up with. You would have the best. All right. And, like, I, I had a for you. That's all. That's okay. That's all right. Don't even worry about it. This is my manager, Kara. Kara? <laughs> Hi, how are Pleasure. you? Pleasure. Nice Pleasure to meet you. Damon Patterson. All right. Thanks a lot. We're, we're all trying to get the scoop. Is this filming? It's filming me, though. You just, you, 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 your voice is there. So just to let you know what's going on, sure. I am covering what I found as the haunted restaurants in Connecticut. Okay. So that's going to be my next series that comes out actually this Monday on my YouTube channel. So far, I've been to Harry's Jailhouse in Middletown. I've been to J. Timothy's in Plainville. Okay. Got some great stories out of both locations. You guys are location number three. All right. All right. So, um, I will just tell you, from, we don't play a lot into the haunted factor mm -hmm. here. Um, most of what we have in the past had is just here's a former owners. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually had guests turn around and leave because of that. So we've always kind of kept it. Just kept it. We encourage, you know, we, we will entertain some conversation, but we don't really have any stories. No, all right, all right, look, that's um, all right. Manager was like, mm -hmm. we don't like scaring our guests away. But uh, there's an individual here that I'm going to try to talk with. I know he's a busy man right now, so I'm going to try to at least get, you know, a few minutes of his time if possible, just so he can kind of share the stories of, I guess, when it was the Curtis house. Uh, first off, your name? Aiden. Aiden? Yes. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Damon. So, what can you tell me about the 1754, you know, tavern here, and then it used to be Curtis house? Yes. Yeah, All right. For a long time, and it's changed over, you know, the years, but I think the Curtis House before this was the longest. So, the building was built in 1736, oh, wow. uh, and then 1754 comes from uh, when it first became a inn. Being the fact that it's been around for a long time, has there been stories of anything crazy here? I haven't heard anything too crazy myself, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, the, the coolest ones I've heard are uh, on the way to Rochambeau, I believe. George Washington stay, mm -hmm. um, why we call our front room Washington room. Uh, so that's where that story comes from. Okay. And then I've heard Marilyn Monroe stayed, because she used to um, come and hang out down uh, the other end of town. There's um, a pharmacy that used to be uh, an old soda fountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and would hang out there and would stop and stay here. And, uh, okay. Those are the cool stories that I've heard. Hey. Um, nothing too wild as far as, uh, I'm sure some of those other places you stop at. But, um, I'm sure there's been some stories over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything has, you know, the quiet whisperings of, of, of something or another, right? Right, but you something know? that's old. You know, yeah, there's, something that's old. There's, yeah. there's, there's always history. history and Plenty. History you don't hear about. Right. Because I don't hear any stories. Yeah, no, huh? Like, in the Curtis House days, people would always come in and ask about it. On it or not? Mm -hmm. It's funny. I don't know. Now um, I don't know if it's because they leaned into that a little more back then. Right. We don't really. You know, promote everyone. Like, right. Try to make that our our shtick. Uh, so it's funny. I don't hear anything. That's hey, look, hey, sometimes it's a good thing. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm little brother. Sometimes it's a good thing. He's it, so like, uh, even if there was one. Yeah, <laughs> uh -uh, uh -uh, don't tell me. Um, yeah, yeah, don't share that with me. Like, I will not go back in that kitchen if you yeah, said something started over there. Absolutely. I'll be leaving. <laughs> like, I'll be on this side over here, just kind of cleaning up the tables. Y'all can go back there. <laughs> yeah, I need a buddy with me the whole time. Right? You know? <laughs> a little nightlight, you know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. Absolutely. No, but I appreciate it though, bro. Oh, absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to talk to you. And I'm glad you're enjoying everything. Enjoy the rest of your meal. Uh, won't even hold you, fam. I never had hummus. Yeah, I said it. I never had hummus before, but. You know, this is the bread that they actually bring out before your meal starts to arrive. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little hummus bite and see what hummus is hitting on. I know, I know y'all going to beat me upside the head in the comment section, Dame. How have you never had hummus before? It's amazing. This, that, and the third. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Do what y'all got to do. I love that stuff. But I'm trying hummus for the first time. Mm. Let's get up off in that thing. Bong. It smells like tuna fish. I ain't going to lie to y'all. That's exactly what it smells like. And not even like good tuna, just 
some tuna that have been sitting there, man, with uh, Hellman's. Tastes like broke ass tuna. I don't know, that's what that's what hummus tastes like. We just kind of got that little uh, cold tangy flair to it. Um, thank you. The bread is good. Multigrain, perhaps. The bread is good. Your broke tuna, not so much. My hummus lovers out there. Chill, son. Chill. I ordered up some spicy popcorn too. Because I was curious. I never had no spicy popcorn at a restaurant. I had like a sweet chili popcorn, which was really good. And that was just the other night when I was out with my boys. But um, let's try it. Let's, let's see what it's in on. Grab a couple of them things. Ooh. Ooh, that's buttery too. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Like a Cajun seasoning, but sweet. You do you don't get hot or anything like that, but you too get the spices in there, buttery. And uh, I don't know what they use. It's like a little brown sugar booger for the sweetness. But that popcorn is nothing short of amazing. I will mess around and give that popcorn a five all day in the play. As far as our hummus and bread, that's gonna <clears throat> bread good. Hummus broke down tuna, not so much. Uh, I'll give it a three though. I'll give it a three. Next level popcorn. Mm. Uh, definitely. Oh, Ooh, there goes a... I got deeper in the middle. <clears throat> wow, <Wild>, spicy. <clears throat> Wild. I also got some steak frites action over here. What up, though? At the end of the day, steak frites is uh, your steak paired up with some french fries. And what are you guys thinking? I mean, hit me in the comment section below. These fries look here, they look wild seasoned, most definitely. And as long as my steak is medium, I'm a happy man. I asked for my steak medium just because I don't want it overcooked. And uh, look, I got that wild juice that I asked for at the end of the day. Look at these fries here, Nana. Ooh, don't fall apart on me. Or fall apart, whatever y'all want to do. If that's how y'all feeling, that's how y'all feeling. Mm, let's get that little crunchy munch for lunch right there, huh, fam? These fries are giving love. Crispy. Salty, crunchy. Mm. These joints may have been double fried. Mm. Mm. Now, I don't even have to dip these fries in ketchup or anything else. They don't need it. I can eat my fries like this all day long. It's so amazing. This when they get freaky. They hit them with the sea salt. That's what sets them off. Oh, family. Nothing in life should be that succulent. <clears throat> and I do mean nothing. All right, fam, that was it for the 1754 house. So we were able to come up off in here, uh, get some good food, at least. You know, unfortunately, as with the other locations where we had stories, we didn't have any stories here at the 1754 house, which is fine, that, that will tend to happen. And you definitely a house with plenty of history. They've been making some upgrades, making some changes, all that good stuff. It looks amazing on the inside. Nice little casual family dining vibes. And then, of course, if you want to stay here, you can always stay in that room. What was her name? Betty? <laughs> that, that, that Betty was haunting. You know what I mean? But uh, outside of that, it's time to slide to our last location this evening. And this location came up on a few different sites as being one of the most haunted restaurants in Connecticut. The Twisted Vine. I'll see you tonight. All right, fam. Our haunted restaurants ends right here at the Twisted Vine. Now, this particular establishment leans all the way into the paranormal. This particular restaurant comes up as one of the only restaurants in Connecticut in the most haunted restaurants in the U.S. They're talking about the Twisted Vine. You go to their website, they're talking about paranormal tours and events that they hold here. And if you talk to the right waiter or waitress, they're going to have a story for you. We're out here in Derby, Connecticut, wrapping up 24 hours of eating at the most haunted restaurants in Connecticut. I'm your main man, Dame Drops. Let's hope we survive this one. Come on. The Derby Restaurant. 
housed in the former Birmingham National Bank building built in 1892, is a hotbed of paranormal activity. Flickering lights, unexplained moving furniture, the shadowy figure of a child. Norwalk-based Ghost Storm investigated the venue in 2019, and Twisted Vine was named one of Food Network's most haunted restaurants in every state. The restaurant also appeared on a 2020 episode of Travel Channel's Kindred Spirits. It's the face, the face it's, the, it's the face right here, you know what I'm saying? I love him. The expression. Oh my God. And she, she might know me a little bit. I watch all your videos. Awesome. I appreciate you. You make me go all over the place for food. I appreciate I you. I literally, I didn't tell my mom you're here. Film today. Based on that, we're going to give you the deluxe tour right now. You got I'm time? ready for oh it. God. I have all the time, time in the world. All the time in the world. Okay. I'm not doing nothing Does the heat bother you? Not at all. Okay. I'm not scared of a little heat. My name is Marissa. Marissa Pleasant. Pleasure to meet you. The first week that I owned the restaurant, uh, the one before me was Tartaglia's. Mm -hmm. And I have a waiter, Dave. He's not here tonight. He's been here for 28 years. The first week we had the restaurant, he gets a phone call. He said, Mike, there's two guys that want to come look at the building. I says, Dave, for what? He goes, Mike, it's haunted. I didn't know. Mm. So all through the years, people would come. It would be hot and heavy. They want to look at the building for paranormal activity. Wow. So this is the bank attic, and what's nice right here? Look right here. I said this was a bank oh. from 1892, well into the 70s. Yeah. Employees actually signed their names. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. History in the making. Ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing it for yourself right now. In the last story, uh, we, we also told them that when music plays, it brings out the spirits. Mm -hmm. So for this filming of the show, uh, we duplicated a band for them. And when they were filming, I wasn't allowed inside. Mm. They would meet with us and we'd have to leave. Yeah. But my employee, Dave, who's not here tonight, was in a band. So I got his band on the show. Mm -hmm. And he said when they started playing, stuff happened. Oh. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Right? Yeah, okay. it was pretty cool. I'm going to show you a spirit that I have on my phone, too. So take my phone inside the circle towards the top. Mm. See, it looks wow. like a woman, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. That was taken by a customer on a tour. And she sent it to me after she saw it. Yeah. Fam, I, I believe you all can agree when I say that this has been the best story of today's series, Dining in Haunted Restaurants. And I'm looking forward to the food, most definitely, but I am so thankful that we ran into an owner who could really break down the happenings of this old bank transformed into a restaurant. And uh, I enjoyed the experience. We didn't have a, a paranormal tour per se, but we learned about some of the activities and happenings here. Sit back, man. Let's see what this food's hitting on. All right, that garlic bread action right there is looking real official. All right. Fresh out the oven, too. But is this like a, a pasta sauce with cheese that you dip it in? It's nice and hot. I don't know if you guys can see the steam coming off that thing, but we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you can see the steam now. We're gonna go ahead and whip that up. And I believe what you do, I've never had it like this before, is you take it and you just go ahead and dip that. Oh my goodness, fam. If this is the bread that comes out before your meal, they are doing it right. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know why. Mm. This reminds me of Pizza Hut breadsticks when you dip them above into the marinara sauce. That's what it reminds me of, 100% family, 100%. And that was amazing. And this just took me there. Oh my goodness. So much great flavor, it's got the oregano working. A little salt, a little pepper on that thing right there, parmesan. Mm. Mm. Garlic, <laughs> I don't want to eat too much to ruin my meal, but family? Come up off over here to Twisted Vine. They're gonna set you off something proper. This is a five all day in the play. Honey Baca, you have to try the sauce. Oh, okay. <laughs> so here's this. So over here, yeah. Jeez. Nice. Anything else? Napkins. Napkins, all right. I think I'm good to go. Good? All right, all right. enjoy. I appreciate y'all. You're welcome. I won't say the ladies was fighting over who was gonna have my table today, but it did happen that way. Shout out to both of these young women up over here. Greatly appreciate y'all. One actually knew who I was when I came in, and then she put a homegirl up on me, and the homegirl was like, I'm taking his table. And then she's like, no, you ain't, because I put you up on him. I'm taking the table now. And they just both hooking me up with food and, and good stuff. Yeah. 
Yo, and look, before I get into this, man, I greatly appreciate everybody out there that whether you recognize me, whether your peoples tell you about me, I'm going to get the opportunity to meet y'all, you know what I'm saying, take pictures, all that good stuff. It's all love because it's all the foodie fam growing regardless where I am. So I just want to put that out there real quick. So I have Panay Vodka in front of me. Then I have Tuscany salmon over some pasta up over here. So let's get into it. All right, y'all, you know I got to get at this Panay Vodka right here. And you can't never go wrong when it comes to the Panay Pasta to begin with. It's getting kind of late, so I got the flash going, you know, just to get y'all that up-close action right there. Let's go ahead and dig up off into it. Oh, my goodness. Foodie fam, who is going to be joining me? on these foodie adventures when we're doing 24 hours. Somebody gotta come out here with me and stop playing with me. Someone gotta come out here and eat with your boy something, cause, ooh, that joint right there wet too. Come on, come with it. Mmm, got some little meat sauce in there. All right, garlic and herbs up off in there. Ooh, holla at your boy, you little cheesy boo thing. Mmm, goodness. Cheers. crushed up tomato and it's that heavy cream that creaminess that's getting to you a uh, nice little savory it kind of slides through your soul and of course when that panay is hitting just right and it's holding all of those good flavors in together family I mean oh what are we doing here what are we doing here we're eating together is what we're doing here these bites of delight oh my goodness Nothing paranormal about this activity. Mm. If you never had salmon talk to you, we're about to have the conversation right now. When you cut up off into salmon, once you touch it, it's supposed to fall apart. That's how you know it's been prepared the right way. Let's give it a test. Salmon, are you breaking like that? Are you breaking? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, you all, oh, you are juicy too. Oh, you a tender fender bender, boo. Oh my goodness, and I already see the flavors all upon you. Come here, come here. Come talk to the foodie fam. Family, you know we all keep it real. I keep it real with you guys. You guys keep it real with me. Hit me in the comment section below. Let me know what would you do to the salmon? What would you do to the penne vodka, right? All right, that creamy dream right there. But what would you do to the salmon known as tender as it is? I need to go to sleep, family. Salmon so good, if the chef is a woman and I wasn't already married, I proposed to her tonight. Mmm. Like that. I said like that. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. No. What's the vine is in playing fair? I think for our 24 hour series, we have to start deeming somebody the winner. Everything here, 100 run it. No five all day in the play, no 10 my friend, no 20 in the money. Everything, the penne vodka, our salmon over pasta. And I didn't even hit the pasta, I just got right to the salmon just because I've been eating all day and I'm starting to feel it. I don't wanna go too hard in the boulevard. I'm taking, definitely taking this home. Amazing, flavors are fluid. Definitely working well together no matter what direction you go in. If you do enjoy the heavy cream, if you do enjoy that that Italian love, that extra Italian love that's put in with the garlics, with the herbs, with the salt, with the pepper, with that that homemade cream sauce whipped up in the back, if you enjoy that on a penne vodka, that's what you want. If you like the lighter seafood bite of some good salmon, and you can taste between when it's good or when it's actually bad, but I'm talking good salmon. I'm talking about breaking up on the fork. You just touch it with the fork, you tap it with the fork and salmon just fall apart, crumble, shatter like glass in front of your face shatter all over the place. When your salmon is that succulent, that soft, that divine, that's what you order when you come to Twist Divine. Um, let me know other 24 hour series that you guys would like to see because I'm really trying to sit down and kind of work on a few things. I, I will say this much, it's not as easy as filming a fast food review. I can do that in one day, have it up in the same day. This takes about two days to get it filmed and then editing and everything else and trying to hit it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I know I won't be able to keep up with that schedule with my own schedule outside of YouTube, but I would definitely make sure a minimum of two of these videos are dropping a week, a minimum. 
and um, I'm, I'm still trying to squeeze three for you guys. I will do my best. All right, fam, so we're wrapping things up. I'm over here at Twisted Vine, you know the deal. Your boy A Good, we got a great story. I think this is a perfect ending to our hunt for those uh, haunted restaurants here in Connecticut, according to a website that I found. And um, let me know. Let me know what you thought at the end of the day. Did you enjoy this series? Do you never want me looking for haunted restaurants ever again? I mean, hit me up. Oh, I got a hill to walk up. Oh, I'm too fat for a hill. Oh, I hope they got a wheelchair somewhere. I'm push my big ass up here. Right, I'm going to holler at y'all. Keep it crispy.